actually want to give our children the best in the world. There's nothing wrong with that. However, while doing so, we try to stay a step ahead of the problem that our kids might face in the future. That's not how life works. We cannot prepare the world for our children, can we? We should prepare our children for that world. Now let's come back to that 10 year old boy who was perceived as adamant and unfortunate. When we discussed about his behavior with his parents, we were told that some traumatic childhood experience led him to create this shield around him. This protective shield when he would not let anyone enter that. After having knowledge of this situation, we dropped all our preconceived biases. We did not push him to participate into our Instead, we came to work on activities and reason designed a group of activities to encourage him to interact with his peers. We focused on his passion and drawing. And we allowed him to understand the drawings the way he wanted to. I was a part of his transformation journey, and then he took it. was hard to see. Remember the extrovert teenager? whose world seemed picture perfect, yet she seemed lonely withdrawn. As a mother, I was under the impression that we were providing her access to the quality of the and taking care of every little means, but clearly we were wrong. And we missed something. We missed her searching hormones that had started clouding her judgment. We missed her evolving, growing play that demanded autonomy. And the pandemic induced anxiety acted as a catalyst. After acknowledging her emotional vulnerability, we were able to direct her focus on the activities that were aligned to her interests. Since she loved writing short stories, we encouraged her to write more. And within a year, she published her first book and delivered her first credit store all at the age of 40. Remember that extrovert kid? The seven year old who became most extrovert? What happened to her? It took three long years for someone to notice that there was something honest in this little girl, despite her stellar grades. She has known her for this three long years, and this summer is going to change her life for good. How do I know about that? Any other can know. How do you know I know about this little girl? Because that little girl is standing right in front of you. Someone who froze when she was asked to introduce herself. My class teacher, Mr. Jacob, he understood that there was some and he took on himself to pull me out of that negative spiral. He started giving me small, small pieces of information to share in front of the class. And as days passed, he started giving me additional responsibilities. He did not push me to take big steps, rather, he encouraged me to take big steps and gave me a platform where I could share my education. That helped me evolve and become the person I am today. That one year from under his guidance made a world of difference. And let me ask you all do you find any common in these scenarios? Anyone? Any common thread that connects the three stories? Yes? There's one common thread that says, one person can make a difference. Yes. We have that misconception that yes, one person can make a difference. It might seem impossible that we can change society or country all by ourselves. But even if we are able to change the lives of a few students, and these few students impact the lives of other few, a chain reaction will be created. Don't you think? that I use as a reference when I interact with 
importance of teaching these skills to these young brains at an early age. As an old Aboriginal, if you give a kid a fish, you feed them for a day. If you teach the kid to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. It highlights how important it is for our students, for our children, to face challenges and learn to pursue them. Our job as educators and facilitators should not be to solve the problem for our kids. Instead, teach them the skills to solve the problem themselves. Let me reiterate. We educators, facilitators, and parents here Yeah.